Hello, welcome back to Mark's House and Garden UK. It's that time of year again. Mid-March, late winter, early spring, it's time to prune the buddleia, and that's what I'm gonna to do today. And whilst I'm doing it, I'll just explain why I'm pruning it and how I prune it. A couple of other points to note. I always keep the cuttings from the buddleia here in a pile because this is next to my wildlife pond and that pile of twigs is a habitat for wildlife. So everything you see me cut off today will go on that pile there. If you want wildlife in your garden, don't make it too tidy. So by leaving piles of waste around the garden, green waste, I should add, uh, you're encouraging wildlife. And I dare say if I were to turn that pile of twigs over, and I'm not going to, there will be thousands of different species of invertebrates and possibly amphibians. I've just found newts in my pond. Quite possibly they hibernate in there, walk across this path and go into the pond at night to breed. And if you want to see those newts, there's a link to a newt video at the end of this one. So this is a buddleia, butterfly bush. It produces hundreds if not thousands of these wonderful blossoms which attract butterflies. Why would you want to attract butterflies to your garden when they eat your cabbages or rather they lay eggs on your cabbages? Well it's all about biodiversity isn't it? Butterfly eggs, the food for birds and other insects. So I encourage the butterflies, I encourage all parts of the food chain because that's all about biodiversity. I even leave um, the blossoms on the plant because they turn into seeds which the birds can eat and the rodents if they fall on the floor. How do you prune it? Basically just take it all off. The rationale behind this is this will grow about two to three meters in any season and it always blossoms at the end. If I didn't prune it it would grow another two to three meters from where it is now and the blossom would be another two to three meters up in the air and I won't enjoy the beautiful scent when it's up there, nor will I be able to see the butterflies that land on these blossoms. So I like to keep my blossoms at about this height. So that's why I'm pruning it right down to the bottom. And it really is, looks quite brutal, but it really is a question of taking it right back to the bottom. As soon as you see new growth starting to appear, it's time to prune your buddleias. If you want to keep them under control, the other benefit of pruning them is you protect the rootstock because it will keep growing. It can grow up to about the third story of a house, apparently. So uh, if it gets that tall and it's moving around in the wind, it's going to damage itself. So let's just get in there now and let's take it right back to ground level. And don't forget, as I do this, you'll see it disappear. I'll probably stop talking now and you can see this in fast forward, but every bit that comes off will go on that pile for the wildlife. Because it's already got some green on it, and because it's also twigs, it will be a mixture of both carbon and nitrogen, which again, we benef be beneficial because that mix of uh, elements helps things to decay down quicker. There we go. So I'll shut up. I'll see you in a minute when I've pruned these two buddleias back down to earth. So there we are, two buddleias, very quickly brought back down to size with a pair of small loppers. I'll put the link to these loppers in the description box below this video, just in case you want to buy some. I do get paid, just to be transparent. Why do I do it? I do it because it's a brute of a plant. It can become very unwieldy and out of control. You want to protect the base stem and by cutting it down, you take all that movement out of it. You also do it because you want to keep the blossom at nose and eye level where you can see the butterflies and also smell the wonderful scent. I've also benefited because I've got a great big twig pile here for the wildlife to hide in. As that, as that decays and dies down and the new nitrogen and the carbon in there get to work and decompose, decomposition is life. It's not death, it's life. So there we go. An interesting fact about Budley, it's very invasive. Now I go on a lot of canal walks 
around the industrial heartlands of Manchester and Oldham. And there's a lot of old mills there, which are derelict. Some of them have been converted into apartments, but some of them are still derelict. And you see this plant growing out of the roofs of those mills, so it is very invasive. And in actual fact, in some states in America, this plant is banned because it's so invasive. And uh, scientists in America have actually developed a non-fertile uh, version of this plant. So you can plant the non-fertile ones. Some people say it, it's called a butterfly bush, but some people say it doesn't attract butterflies, actually. Uh, that's a myth, but I'll tell you now. I'll show you some footage when this grows. In my eyes, this attracts more butterflies to my garden than any other plant now. I accept that it may not produce a lot of nectar, so maybe it doesn't feed the butterflies as much as we'd like it to, but there's lots of other plants in my garden to feed the butterflies, but this certainly attracts them. There we go, pruning the buddleia. I love this time of year. Whenever I prune this, I know that spring is just round the corner. I'll see you soon for some more house and garden adventures. Bye for now.